And now, the Sami culture is very unique to Northern Norway. Where exactly would someone find this community? Actually, everywhere in Norway, because someone still feel deeply ashamed about being Sami. And I think we can come here to be free. Uh, you do have the risk of being uh, called one to get your names, uh, being spitted on, things like that. Just go into the main street in Tunisia on a Saturday night. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Going back a little bit, when you were 14 years old, you created a study group. Tell us about that. Yeah. I was feeling really good at that school. So instead of just being paralyzed and doing nothing, I said to myself, well, no, that then we have to do something to create me for being here. And we had a goal war, this is back in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And okay, why not World Peace? So I created this study group, World Peace, and we were looking on politics, history, what to do. Just not feeling so helpless. How many people were part of this group? Eight to ten, I believe. Mean, this was a really small place, 800 all together. Oh, In my yeah. class, we were 16, and there were joint students from three other schools, and then we made 32 all together. Wow, wow. What sorts of things did you do? In the study group, or now, we were uh, reading news, that was a very important part of getting used to keeping updated with the news. And this was many, many years before this social media uh, news are so fast now. And at one time, I had to wait if I had an opinion, write it down, send it to the paper, they were accepting or not, and maybe two or three more days later. Shame, why are we in our 
about this. If you really believe that God is the creator of everything and everyone, we have to show it. In the community today, there's a very big push for identity. Who are you in a community? How do you identify in a community? Hmm. That's a very difficult question. I know you lost, so you take me a lot of money. Exactly. <laughs> I grew 
Buckley had a very strict, religious uh, thing uh, at school. We were not allowed to sing and move at the same time. That was dancing. Dancing was a sin. It was dancing and leading to sex, which is the cardinal sin in itself. And when we were having uh, gymnastics, music works a lot. In, uh, when we were supposed to learn about uh, contraceptives, purity, etc., many uh, parents who just glued together the patients so that their kids weren't able to see it. And of course, being young, however, I couldn't just sit silent. I was trying to figure out what else is there on the market. And my parents took me to summer camp, where a lot of the priests from South Africa were working very close to Nancy Mandelios. I went to Budinska, a German, uh, I think, maybe Austria, I'm not very good at geography. He was leading the uh, student rights. Uh, and they were all Christian and rebels and leading rockets, fighting for human rights. And I thought, ah, oh, that's my God. And later on, I read a lot about feminist theology. We had the um, liberation theology in Latin America, in Nicaragua, and the was, uh, yeah. So, my theology is that God is love and God is liberated. And God is for justice. Not for laws, but equal treatment, inclusion. So, do you see that differently than, uh, for example, all the teachers of the world? As I know them, yes, but at the same time, we do know that there are um, feminist Israelis. Muslims uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, there, there are changes throughout the world, both in Judaism, Judaism Christianity, uh, Islam, whatever. The world is changing, but it takes time. Okay. Is there some reason you think it's a little step further in Christianity? Mm -hmm. Excellent question. Hmm. Jesus himself was a rabbi. He was actually a Jew. And I said, no, uh, I'm a good king. <laughs> so uh, he was a revolutionary. And he, he saved the prostitutes. He saved the sinners, the thieves, whatever. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to understand the difference between these so that it's clearer. Um, I, I find the, your conviction to be very fascinating. Go away. It will 
out of my face, walking into the ocean and wandering wasteland. It's a holy moment. And when I do see you, and when I see the other people here, I see them be one. Because we're all created to be equal. Does it make sense? I'm not completely sure. <laughs> I, I, I just see it. I don't completely understand, but you, you say you feel what you feel. What exactly it is it? The first time I saw you on screen, I saw many possibly colors between us. Yeah. I still feel a love inside you. Yes, I'm able to feel through your eyes the way the muscles in your face is moving. Mm. It's very big difference. <laughs> Thank you. 
because uh, it's a change here, and that's why it's so important that the bishop will be at the service of God, because he's the head of the church. But how do you see the church in the bigger picture? On the move. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there is still uh, a long way to go, especially concerning gender identity. Yeah. We still use he and she for the most, and still referring mostly to God as man. But I want that people come to baptize their child. I want that the forum will be more inclusive than just mother and father. They could be mother. And Mead's mood, as we say in Norwegian, mood and mood, father and mother, father and father. It shouldn't be necessary for them to call and say hello. This is not a form that we can fill out. And I know many people find it Ramlar. Anyone who can know that in Norwegian? Ramlar. Heresy. Yeah, right. Oh, heresy. Yeah, yes, yes. yes. Maybe there is two mothers and a father. Will we include? I would say yes. Okay. Do you still see that people choose to have their children baptized? As no, it's the same thing, but really. Mm -hmm. Yes, unfortunately, because I think that the church too has an important role. Uh, it's very important with the bishops. We do need to have some place to go when life comes to us, uh, you know, in a good way or in a difficult way. And in the church, the people who work there, they are still the leading people of where they are, with their life, with their emotions. Why do you think fewer people are doing baptism? Because uh, they have figure out their own way of celebrating the new life. Uh, in Norway we call it the modern as celebrating the name of the new being. Yes. And they do it in private instead of going to the church. And the whole Norway is getting more and more secular, not just not yes. secular, yes. yes. And we see it also in the confirmation confirmation at 40 to 50 years old. Uh, a lot of people are going through the uh, uh, uh which is a secular confirmation instead. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. I think we kind of uh, should be our in the girls and scientists parties, meetings, mm -hmm. because I belong there. Yes. And do the same in the church because I also belong here. And I say we need to talk. We need to meet. And I do believe in symbols. That's why we have this. And outside the church tomorrow, we will rise at night, and it will be there until the service tomorrow night is finished. When I decorate the church, I have this rainbow falling down from the altar. Oh. Down the aisle. Okay, okay. Yeah, it you keep up and welcome very much. We use people in here through the service. It's visible up here. We don't deny anyone to join the community. Everyone is welcome. Uh, I do collaborate with Green Youth. I think it's so important to have a place to meet. Being queer when you come can be very hard. Maybe you don't have the language for who you are. Maybe you don't know everyone else. But we make this place where we serve breakfast before the parade. And they, they can come fully free, they can do their makeup, we do our flights in the world, and then they can go with some of that. They don't seem to know anyone, but then they have someone to go together with the parade. But that's important. Uh, I also said that we need this banner, the church will fight. So we go with that in the parade. Uh, but that's important. People do notice. People do listen. They get curious. The first year, I think we were 15, maybe 20 of the service. Last year, yeah, more than 100. My gosh. Yeah. Wow. How do you manage people who 
who do not believe in God. Okay. 
Jamaica are open and inclusive, you do have some conservative Christians who use every opportunity to say it's still a sin, you shouldn't, you don't, you can't do. And if possible, I meet up and argue with them. If possible, I answer them in the paper. Wow. Not so many years ago, I had this full page in the paper with me with this uh, halo with rainbow colors on my head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm arguing against a priest uh. who, he's been divorced three times, but the Bible says a lot about getting divorced and being married. Does not say a lot about same sex marriage, but he was preaching this against same sex marriage. So I, I didn't go to me, but I did go to pretty good place. Were you successful? I think so. I mean, not <laughs> only thanks for Pierre. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in a very broad sense, your work is sort of like a, mis a mystery. Mm -hmm. How do you combine? your work and your ministry, with the work that's going on here at Art of Pride, which is our host event this weekend. I remember when I reached out to Art of Pride and said, we would like to have a service, a radio service. Would you like to be a whole, a whole part of this? And they said yes. It was not necessarily Expected because since the church has done so much wrong and said so many horrible and judging things, even though I reached out my hands, I can't be sure that the other people would say, Yeah, we like to jump. But they did. And I've been to a lot of arrangements, I've been talking with them, supporting you, and I've been engaged in whatever. Catches my interest, and of course, making alliances is not something that happens on its own. You have to put energy and time in it. Right. Yes, what's your question? Um, I just it seems that there would be more going on because it's a very interesting mixture, and I wonder how you succeeded to do it. Being honest, okay. being honest and sincere, and of course, try to be humble. Because uh, I'm, I'm not in a position that I can judge other people. I haven't worked in a sort of my own life. <laughs> so <laughs> I just want to just want to have fun. Yeah, I want to have fun. I want to have love. I want to have inclusion and diversity. I want the whole world to be as far from the rainbow. That's my dream. <laughs> Do you feel it's very successful, this combination? Yeah, yeah, it's so powerful. It's so powerful. And the message from Monthly Pride is diversity. It's love. Um, and it's the same for me. And adding two positive forces together makes it even more positive, even stronger. That's fantastic to hear. Absolutely beautiful. But what would you like the international community to know about Tromsø, Arctic Pride, your work, and their work. You're always welcome in Tromsø. Whenever you come to Tromsø, you are welcome. You can reach me on Facebook. The church is maybe not open during the daytime, but arrangements uh, okay, coming up. Don't be afraid to challenge your church. Or mosque, or temple, whatever. The divine has created each and every one of us. Don't be afraid to challenge them. Do you think God or the divine made a mistake creating me? No. I'm sure the divine had a special day, a special moment. Now, what do you feel is the Biggest misconception of the church that people tend to have. That we haven't changed. That we're still the old uh, dark times when we were very anxious and, uh, yeah. No, we're not that anymore. Uh, there have been a lot of change. And please give us a chance. 
You mentioned, and I'm going to take a step back for a second, but you mentioned Arctic Prime gave you some kind of award or prize. Can you yeah. Tell the audience about that. Last year, I won this um, prize for being, yeah, an activist. Yeah.
If my face is open and my eyes, no rejection. Usually, the anger kind of lasts away. Very good. But of course, I don't have to agree with that. I can say, I hear that you say, and I accept that, and I do respect your right to, to have that opinion or experience. But on the other hand, my experience, my belief, are to do with you. But would, if you come up against that kind of really aggressive, angry person, how do you stop yourself from not getting angry against that reaction? You know, so strong, yeah, yeah. I don't want to come and fire back. Yeah. yeah, because I do strongly believe that everyone has every time is doing their best. <laughs> and when I do believe that everyone, every time is doing their best, of course, maybe they another time can do much better, but something, I'm kidding, something inside them that probably makes them feel kind of helpless. You don't get very angry, you feel empowered. So if I try to find the empathy, it's much easier not to get driven into their emotions that stay in mind. Yeah, yeah, good answer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Another question? Observation, sure. So, you know, you're saying with angry people you have this force field around you. A force field around you. Yeah. Okay. You know, you are one of the most open people I have ever met. One of the most so open people. Kind, giving, understanding. I mean, so many different words I could use to describe you. Kind, and okay. you're a people magnet. Thank people you. tend yeah. to gravitate towards you because they can see this openness and this love. And uh, it's hard to make that openness, openness love. Oh, sure, love us to make It's true, it's so true. I speak only the truth. I'm in the house of God and I speak only the truth. Why, why do you think we rush so much just to get <laughs> we, we checked into the hotel and just left everything that came here. Okay. We don't do that for you. Yes, for the, for the audience, if you watch this video, the whole Irish contingent is sitting back <laughs> offering these wonderful pieces. The first time that we arrived here, I think it was 2018, and Mary Mate, you made us feel so welcome, so uh -huh. part of what was going on in a small city within the Arctic Circle, and we had travelled so far to, to just experience this. And you only enhanced our whole um, experience here by just being who you are. Beautiful statement. I mean, you enhance it so much for um, I really am touched because I just reached out and said hello. I'm so happy to see you. It was really coming from the heart. <laughs> we know it and we can see it and feel it. Okay.